William Afton is the main antagonist of the Five Nights at Freddy's series, first referenced as the killer in FNAF 1 before being given form in FNAF 2. I don't have to be the one to tell you that William Afton as a character is one of the most important characters in the FNAF story. I think when I called him the main antagonist you got the idea. And for today I just really wanted to talk about him, so let me indulge. I'll be doing this with other characters down the line, I mostly just want to make this a thing where I go over individual characters so people can understand the FNAF story a bit easier. I figure William Afton, being so important, would be a good character to start with. So let's start at the very beginning. William Afton first became a part of the FNAF story at some point between 1983 and 1987, opening Fredbear's Family Diner alongside Henry Emily as a business partner. William had a wife and three children, Michael, Elizabeth, and a third child who William didn't feel like naming. William Afton can be described as someone who was outwardly weird, maybe even cruel. However, William was also a technological genius. Alongside Henry, William created the Springlock animatronic suit. The Springlock suit doubled as both an animatronic and mascot costume. When one turned the crank on the inside of the costume, the endoskeleton inside of it would compress against the inside of the suit, allowing it to be worn by a human being. The two suits known to be Springlock suits in the series include Spring Bonnie and Fredbear although there is also a Springlock suit seen in Sister Location that was never given a name, potentially some sort of Spring Chica or Foxy. Fredbear's success led to the creation of a Sister Location, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. William's success in this business convinced him to kill some kids for some reason, and his choice of victim was the absolute worst he could have picked. After trapping the security puppet animatronic in its box and locking a girl outside, William came around in his purple Lamborghini and killed Charlotte Emily, the daughter of his business partner. This event would lead to the closure of the first Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Now under suspicion of Henry, it's possible William wanted to escape his partner's gaze and keep up this whole child killing thing since it worked out great the first time. He designed a new line of animatronics to be used in his brand new restaurant with the lead animatronic designed after his own daughter, Circus Baby's Pizza World. William somehow managed to convince investors that the child storage compartments and danger hooks inside the animatronics were necessary, and the restaurant opened. It must have also been Bring Your Daughter to Work Day because William brought a Elizabeth to the grand opening and told her not to go near Circus Baby, despite her protests. However, Elizabeth was bad at following rules and approached Baby anyway, who activated and killed Elizabeth, stuffing her inside her own stomach cavity. Distraught at his own daughter's death, William closed Circus Babies after just one day in operation, putting the animatronics in an underground bunker to be rented out later as a side hustle. So that worked out just great for William, and now he was pissed, especially because later on his unnamed son would be killed by the Fredbear animatronic after a springlock failure, which also shut Fredbear's down. So far, William has had three different restaurants shut down due to dead children, so he decided to take out his rage the only way he knew how killing children. William's former business partner, Henry, had just opened up a new Freddy's place with the brightly colored toy animatronics as the headliners, and also the security puppet from before, now possessed by the ghost of Charlotte. Oh, and also the Fredbear costume was there. William could have just walked in and iced some toddlers, but the toy animatronics were now equipped with facial recognition software that would have alerted security and gotten him kicked out on suspicion of serial child murdering. William would need a disguise this time, and a new MO. He decided to wear the Old Spring Bonnie costume as it would make him fit in with the other animatronics and also allow him to lure children away. William was able to lure five children into the back room of the new Freddies and kill them. Lucky for him, the withered animatronics from the old Freddies were just kind of there, prime for stuffing. He put each of the five kids into one of the individual suits, including Foxy who barely had any skin on him. The fifth kid was a real stinker named Cassidy who was about to make William's life an actual living hell after this moment and she was stuffed into the Fredbear suit. This gets more into theory territory now, but I have my suspicions that William would then take the night shift under the pseudonym Jeremy Fitzgerald. It was his own idea as a joke, as three of the kids he killed were named Jeremy, Fritz, and Gabriel, as if he was saying, I f***ing did this. Why he did this, I don't really know, but it was probably to dismantle them later on when he realized they were possessed. This didn't work and he got fired, but replaced himself with the name Fritz Smith now. After setting all the animatronics to maximum difficulty, he got a Golden Freddy plush, which was pretty cool. However, William was unsuccessful, but killing five kids did manage to get the place shut down. At this point, William was pretty much done with this whole children possessing machinery thing and decided to do something about it. William called up his son Michael, who he's kinda hated for a while now since Michael was the one responsible for William's nameless son's death. William told Michael to go into the underground bunker and see Circus Baby since he had a pretty strong suspicion that his daughter might still be around. Meanwhile, William just kinda waited for the next Freddy's to go out of business. The old animatronics had been refitted with new parts, with the workers somehow missing the fact that there were dead bodies inside them. Michael showed up and didn't really do anything, and eventually Freddy's closed. 
William took the opportunity to finally get rid of the animatronics and broke in, dismantling them. However, when he did this, the spirits of the kids were released and they were pissed. They forced William into a corner, but luckily the Spring Bonnie suit was there. William probably figured he could scare the spirits into submission, or maybe just protect himself. Or maybe Spring Bonnie was his comfort character. No matter how you put it, William put the suit on. However, this is an old ass suit with the main gimmick being rusty springs holding sharp machinery in place. So while William was having an evil cackle, ha 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 ha, the suit shifted from suit mode to animatronic mode while he was wearing it. The spring lock failure essentially jammed a metal endoskeleton into William's body and killed him. However, he was now a dead body inside an animatronic suit, so you can take a guess that he's not exactly gone. The next stage of William's master plan was beginning and he sat and rot away for 30 years. The odd thing about this time skip is that it actually pushes some of the FNAF storyline into the future. Actually, if the theory that FNAF 1 takes place in 1993 is true, then Springtrap would be found either this year or the next year. By the way, his name is Springtrap now. Springtrap is found by Phone Dude and the Weed Gang, and is brought to Fazbear Frights, a haunted house attraction themed after all the dead children William killed in the 80s. Michael happens to be working there, so William fucks with him for four nights, and then also a hard mode. Michael sets the place on fire, and William survives, and this would be the first time anyone ever tries this. After FNAF 3, it's left ambiguous as to what William was up to, however, the next time we see him, he's gone through reverse puberty. Scraptrap wears a straight up different Spring Bonnie suit than the one Springtrap wore, making one guess as to why and how Afton switched suits. By the way, his name is Scraptrap now. William gets tossed into the ventilation system along with Scrap Baby, Molten Freddy, and Lefty, and not once do any of these characters interact with William in a meaningful way, despite his character being central to all of their arcs. Ultimately, Michael is sick of his father's shit and once again sets the building on fire. William dies, and this would be the first time anyone ever tries this. Golden Freddy actually prevents William from going to hell, however, because Cassidy would rather torture William's soul. William is sent to the realm of Ultimate Custom Night, where he is endlessly tortured by the animatronic he brought to life and unlife with some very odd exceptions like Funtime Freddy. I guess he just wasn't that important to him. Oh, and also himself, twice. Golden Freddy only loses control of Afton's spirit after a video game studio interferes. Fazbear Entertainment wants to capitalize on their history of tragedy and also never learn from their mistakes or use their brains. So they sell Strap Trap circuitry to Silver Parasol Games, the in-universe developer of FNAF VR. William's soul is bound to the circuitry, and he becomes a virus within the game's engine. Glitch Trap's goal now is very different than before, as he wants to swap minds with someone playing the game so he can come back to life. By the way, his name is Glitch Trap now. This actually kind of works. William merges his mind with Vanessa A, who develops a separate personality influenced by William called Vanny. I'm not sure how I would describe Vanny. It's not like William is the other personality, but he's basically the voice inside Vanny's head. Through some odd change of events, however, there's a different piece of Afton still clinging to life. Underneath the Pizzaplex and security breach, Burn Trap waits in a recharge station, still bearing William's corpse after it survived the fire in Pizza Sim. By the way, his name is Burn Trap now. This is where things get a bit complicated, as we're not really sure how much of Burn Trap's story is canon. From what we can tell, William now exists as two separate entities, as the Glitch Trap virus that possesses a portion of Vanessa's brain, and as the physical entity Burn Trap underneath the Pizzaplex. I personally believe that Vanny is where Afton's mind went, but Burn Trap is possessed by the agony William went through, since agony is able to possess things just like spirits in the FNAF universe. In the Burn Trap ending of Security Breach, Burn Trap is hauled away by the blob as the building goes up in flames. This is the first time anyone's ever tried this. In the Princess Quest ending, William is permanently erased from Vanessa's mind, causing the Vanny personality to disappear as well. In the bad ending, Gregory is killed by Vanny, so so William technically continues existing, and in the rooftop and Vanny endings, Vanny ends up being killed, which would also kill William. In any other ending, who the fuck knows what happened to him? Do I think William's story ends here? No, not really. I could be wrong about Burn Trap. Burn Trap could be William fully back in business, and he could totally have survived Security Breach's ending. Or Vanny could be alive, or someone else could be possessed by Glitch Trap. No matter what though, I feel like William is still around, albeit at the weakest he's ever been. He's died, been burned three times now, been erased from someone's mind, he has no physical form to return to if Burn Trap is gone, and unless he's being stored on a floppy disk somewhere, I don't see him coming back in someone else's body. In a way, William is the ultimate survivor. He literally cannot be killed no matter how hard someone tries. But you thought I was done? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. So far, I've only touched on William in the games, but he also exists in the books.
Between the Silver Eyes trilogy and Fazbear Frights, William has a number of appearances, both major and minor. He's the main villain of the first two Silver Eyes books, and has a minor appearance in the fourth closet, and he does appear pretty frequently in the Fazbear Fright series of short stories. I won't spend as much time on these versions of William since their stories are actually like written out and easy to follow, so I'll just sum them up pretty basically. In The Silver Eyes, William was pretty much always known for being kind of a creep, overly jovial, and oddly enough, it's apparently plot important that he was overweight in the 80s. In the first book, William is disguised as Dave Miller and kidnaps a kid to try and springlock him, while also showing he has already been springlocked once before and survived. This is something unique to book William, and although it kind of makes him more of an edgelord tumbler sexy man, I do think it adds an amount of depth to his character to make him survive something like that. He ends up getting springlocked again at the end of this book and comes back as Springtrap in the Twisted Ones, where he reveals he's been in control of the Twisted Ones the entire time. I'm not a fan of this interpretation of the character, as I envision Springtrap as a character who doesn't talk, but William goes on full-on villainous monologues in this book. But the worst is in the fourth closet, where he returns as part cyborg and freed from the Springtrap suit. Now a wheelchair-bound zombie, this is the William I think everyone should forget forever, because what the f*** is this? In the Fazbear Fright series, William is very much the same, but with more emphasis on his technological side. His first appearance is debatably in the very first Fazbear Fright series, where Spring Bonnie is the main villain. However, this story ends with Spring Bonnie hanging himself and dying, so I'm not sure we can count that one. Otherwise, he's had a prominent role as a hospital victim who dies in an explosion, and the one who killed the kids possessing the Stitch Wraith. He creates the Afton Amalgamation, and eventually f***s off into the void of my consciousness forever. There is so little to say about this version of William compared to the Silver Eyes and Game William, it leaves me speechless. Cuz... Cuz I have nothing else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on FNAF's best tumor. As much as I hate William Afton coming back every fucking game, I still love the character in general for being such an unapologetically evil villain, with a kick-ass design as Springtrap. His story is convoluted and ridiculous, so thanks for putting up with me spewing about it for as long as I have. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share around. Peace.